second service would you imagine that this we've been here already guys we've been here amen amen this is our second service. we're just so glad to have everybody here my goodness you guys look fantastic amen i don't know about you but i'm feeling good this morning and after that worship service i'm feeling inspired praise god amen today is easter sunday and uh what a wonderful thing you know easter is not just celebrated here in the united states of america easter is celebrated everywhere around the world every language every culture every tradition every village even every religion we celebrate Easter but every religion knows about this Jesus could you imagine this Jesus you know his story some of you may be here because it's Easter Sunday and somebody dragged you here I'm so glad that you're here and thank God that you allow them to drag you here thank you <laughs> you don't have to be a believer to be here actually I am there's a lot of us that are but you don't have to feel a nest a necessary feeling nobody's gonna force you to be anything here but yourself amen so we thank you for coming and in fact if you are not a believer and you're still here uh, thank you uh, we didn't rush you out yet so that's that's a pretty good sign amen so we thank you so much but even every other religion every other faith, believer unbeliever know about this Jesus and think about this Jesus this Jesus was born in a manger in a city in a town called Bethlehem nobody knew him he had no heritage his family did not have any money they had no clout in fact his earthly father Joseph had to use a mule to bring his wife to Bethlehem now if you're a man and you brought your wife to some other place via mule you're a dead man you better be carrying some credit cards or something ready to buy some stuff after you got to Bethlehem but they didn't have any money and so Jesus was born in this tiny place called Bethlehem in a place that was intended for animals for cows and goats he, he grew up really there was nothing to be known of him in fact the bible says there was nothing to be known of him there was there was nothing there that would say hey this is some great man there was nothing there and then when he died he died as a sinner he died as a criminal he died on a criminal's cross today we celebrate him could you imagine that he's the most well-known man in all of history not just modern history ancient history and even though it's ancient it's still pertinent to you and me you know how you say oh that's ancient history it doesn't matter now yeah it matters now why because I believe his death at Calvary teaches us something about life I believe his death at Calvary, God wanted to use to teach us what we ought to do when things don't happen the way we want it to happen. Look at the Bible with me. The book of Isaiah. Excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25 to 26. The Bible says, for he must reign. Thank you guys. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet can you read that with me for he must reign come on say that he must come on say it. he must can, can you say it with some gusto he must yeah i went to uh one of our brother mike's uh mike's concert and he's death metal band you know and it's like if if winter nights were here they were like you must reign. Can, can you say that with some like some 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 scratch in your throat he must rain rain he must rain he must rain 
This Jesus Christ was on Calvary. And even though he was on the cross, he must reign. He must reign. So I believe that his death teaches us something. For he must reign until he put he has put all his enemies under his feet. Anybody has had any enemy here before? Uh, if you have not had an enemy, you have not lived long enough. There's some people that don't want you to succeed. In fact, if they see you miserable, their day is made. You're that important. <laughs> you are that important. Amen. That somebody's life and somebody's happiness is dictated by your misery. Anybody ever been there? You know, I have, I have an enemy. It's called uh, City. They call me once in a while. Tell me I'm late. Amen. No, financial enemies, finances that want to crush us, finances that want to destroy us. How about relational enemies? People that you once thought you loved are now no show. Uh huh. In a crowd like this, somebody ought to be saying, Amen. <laughs> right? Some enemies, people that just. Want to see you destroyed. They, 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 they want to come and just tear you up. And Jesus had his enemies. But he must reign. reign. A few months ago, about five months ago, this community went through some of the most incredible storm, most powerful storm ever recorded. To have happened in New York City. In the eastern seaboard. Her name was. Sandy. Sandy. And, and we don't want to sing like John Travolta. Sandy. Baby. I'm in misery. Alright. No. no. This Sandy. Destroyed. So many. Things. If, if you were here maybe two or even a day. Out to Sandy. And you walked down. Olympia Boulevard or Robin Road or uh, 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 Kensington or, or, or Armstrong, all around this area, you see garages blown in. I guess you don't, you water don't blow things in. Shove things in. It push things in. There were cars that were on somebody's lawn. You remember that big, big, huge, what do you call that? That car, that, that big container that was sitting on top of a honda accord if you had walked down robin road you would have seen another container sitting on somebody's stoop because of the power of this storm and lives were taken uh and multiple lives all around our area there were, were children that drowned in this terrible storm uh, it's just the storm was tragic and for our for our here for our building here, the storm came in and dumped so much water in here, you know, that it came in almost to the plant. If, if you guys weren't here before, the, this platform was not built here. I, I was one foot shorter. Could you imagine that? <laughs> I know that's hard for some of you to believe. Amen. Yeah, but this, this, this platform is 12 feet, uh, 12 inches. Uh, the one we had before was about 6 inches. The water came about 3 inches on the platform. So it destroyed the whole entire basement. The whole entire basement was gone. When you came in here, the smell of the sewage was there. Those of you that live around this area, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, we know it too well, PJ. We just know it too well. And for, for the next two months... Almost every day we were relieving our neighbors and, and, and giving food and, and, and some shelter and some, some heat, some electricity just for the electronics, just to meet the need of our community. And, and that, was, that was some type of an enemy. But I realized that through that storm, I realized what God is trying to tell us. That storms in life, sometimes most of them, if not all of them, if you are a believer that Jesus reigns, comes to give you something powerful. 
You know, this building, the way it is now, would not have been here had it not been for Superstorm Sandy. There are people in this congregation right now that we did not know until Superstorm Sandy. But God is able to take the storms of life and bring something brand new and bring something glorious and bring something amazing here. Believe me, I don't sound like this all the time. I've never sounded this good until this week. Until right now. Because of the sound system. I think if I sang a song, my flat notes would be really, you know, right in normal. And my high notes would just, no, no, please don't ask me to sing. Sandy, baby. No, you don't want that. But, listen, all of this stuff came. Through some other means. Do you know that our building was renovated for about $20,000? All of the money did not come from us. It came from other sources. A church from, from Summit, New Jersey named Renaissance Church came in here a few days after Sandy came. Yeah, give them a hand. Praise God for them. They loaded up the trucks. And you know how we got to know them? Through Big Ange. What? In fact, VH1 filmed me. I'm a, I'm, I'm a sore celebrity. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. They came in here and the reason why they connected with us is because our neighbor told them about the relief effort that we were doing here. And all we could think about, we weren't thinking about this. The Renaissance Church put in $14,000 of their own money. To the sound system, to the ceiling that you see here, amen, to the, to the, the dual screens. We look hip now, man. This is the place to be on Sunday mornings. I mean, if you're not here on Sunday mornings, I don't know where you're at. But this is a place to be. This, this, is, this beats eating Cheerios with your newspaper, man. This is, this is awesome. 9.30 in the morning, we have 9.30 service now. This is... Earlier today, we had a 9.30 service. Actually, this is our second service. We're going we're gonna to continue our 9.30 service next week. Amen. And we're going to continue it for as long as, as we're able to. Amen. We're going to have still coffee there. Amen. So if, you want, if you're an uh, early bloomer, amen, and you like to catch the worms, as they say, come here at 9.30. We're going to have a great time for you. But <clears throat> all of this stuff came because of that. Why? Because I believe that God... Wants us to reign with Christ. That there's nothing in this world that ever will defeat you. Anything, any enemy that will try to get a hold of you. Any enemy that will try to choke you. That God don't want to reign. He must. Come on, he must. He must. Think about the issues of your life. Some of us have been walking around. In our life, living defeated. Some of us think about our financial situation. Some of us think about our health situation. Some of us think about our social situation. And we think, man, I, this is just messed up for me. Everything just seems falling apart. Amen. If you're a believer in Jesus, and you, and like I said, you don't have to be a believer in this place. We are, and you can just go ahead and, and sit there, and, 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 and hopefully we see you again. And we're good people, right? We're, we're, we're nice people, amen. We're good people company of friends amen so if even if you're a believer but i'm a believer and i believe that there's no enemy in my life no matter what is happening in my life that christ jesus didn't come to make me victorious over it see jesus died on calvary last friday was good friday amen somebody said what's so good about it if you were bought uh, if somebody else died for your sins how would you feel Pretty good. That's a good Friday. Amen. But it's good Friday. And, and, and Jesus died on the cross. Before he died on the cross, he was made to be whipped on a wooden post with what they call a cat of nine tails. This cat of nine tails was a whip with nine whips on it. And, and terminating those whips were, were glass or some, some type of object, metal object, that when you whip somebody, the flesh, it would dug in, it would dig in, and the flesh would rip off after that first whip. Jesus was whipped 39 times.
39 times he was whipped there. I Means the places that had begun to heal after the first one got resurrected themselves and hit again. How many, t- how many of us here has felt like, you know what, life has just hit me with so many blows? Have you ever felt so down and life continues to kick you down? Have you ever felt so battered and, and when it rains, it what? And Jesus was then taken out of that whipping post, still alive, barely alive. And was made to carry this wooden cross down a road they can now call Via Dolorosa. (laughs) That highway of blood. And on that highway, people kicked him, people punched him. Scripture says they pulled on his beard. They spit at him, they cursed at him. You think he did something terrible? Could you imagine even those that that he had helped, those that he had healed, those that he had amended? Anybody here has ever had anyone who you've helped and now you can't find them at all? And in fact, you helped them and now they've turned around and they talk bad about you? Right? Right? They don't even know your number now. They don't even know your face. You see them at the mall and they turn their back. People didn't know. And then he was hung on that cross and nailed on that cross. And he was there, he was there to die and they pierced him on his side. And you know who got them there? His friend, Judas. How many here has ever had Judases in their life? Then he was... Laid on a borrowed tomb. But see, this Jesus, he couldn't just lay there and die. He was dead already. So he was supposed to just lay there and die. But three days later, he rose again. Why? Because he must reign. It was was not in his nature. To stay on the canvas. It was not in his nature to tap out. It was not in his nature to run away and scurry away. His nature was he must reign. It was in him. It was not in him to lay in the grave for too long. Because he must reign. And I'm telling you right now, if you're not a believer, I wish you were, but you don't have to be. But those of us that believe understand this, that if Christ is in us, this victory, this hope of glory is inside of us crying out, I must reign. I must reign. You can't stay down. You can't stay defeated. You can't stay dead. Get up again. Rise up again. Get on your feet again. Renew again. Resurrect again. He must reign. He must reign. He must reign. So no matter what happens in my life, I've got to say, Jesus must reign. I don't care what's happening to my finances. I don't care what has happened to my life. He must reign. I must get up from where I've fallen. I must get up from where I've cried. I must get up from where I've slipped up and fell. Because he must reign. Shout it. Reign. Reign. If you and I have been crucified with Christ... The Bible says the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. I'm quickened today. I'm quickened today. I pray to God that in this message, every single ear that is listening and every heart that is turning over and trying to open up their heart to hear this message, I want to tell you that Christ wants you to reign over your enemies. Whatever your enemies may be, it may not be a person. It may be just a situation. Maybe it's, it's just bad choices when you were younger. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? Anybody ever made bad choices when they were younger? Maybe it's your addictions. Maybe you're just, maybe you even hate yourself. Christ wants you to reign over that. And the Bible says here, he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death what christ jesus wants to tell us is that look i'm going to destroy all the enemy now i want you to know i'm going to destroy the very thing that nobody can run from 
death. Have you ever heard of rich people that run to Switzerland? You ever heard of criminals that run to another country? There are some things you can get away with. Some of you have. Um, let's, let's go over there. <laughs> Why are you bringing it up? But there are some things that you can get away from. But death, no matter where you are, no matter where you live, if you're under a rock, under a tree, under a $20 million roof, death is going to get you. You can be tall, short, wide, thin, Rich, poor, no matter if you run the marathon or run to the refrigerator, <laughs> death is going to catch you. In fact, there's some people that work out so much, they died more than the person that smoked most of their life. And you scratch it and go, what in the world happened there? <laughs> because one thing in life is certain, and that is we're all going to die. And you're like, Pastor Jones, I came to church to be uplifted. I don't want to hear about death right now. But I want to tell you, I'm talking about death. Why? Because he must reign. You don't know this, but we have a champion here. We, 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 we've been blessed. With Not Frank Notorious Galarza here with us. Stand up, Frank. That's our son right there. He fought in the Barclay Center. And knocked out the guy in second round. Oh! Props to you, big man. Amen. We'll see you at the buffet. Amen. Yeah, because I won't be seeing you at the ring. That's for sure. Amen. But talk about some fights. Talk about some fights. And there are some fights you can't run away from. And this is one of them. You can't run away from that. No matter if you beg the doctor, doctor, please. Don't let me die. And that's why, you know, we talk about people you don't have to believe. Most people who are unbelievers all their life turn all of a sudden into God on their deathbed. Oh God, if you're real. I'm not, I'm not trying to mock it. It's just the way it is. Just because we understand we can't run away from death. And the only one and that has control over death. Is God. So we look at 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15. And we read this other scripture. 50 says. I tell you brothers. Flesh and blood. Cannot inherit. The imperishable. Behold I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all. Be changed. <laughs> I like that. Anybody here need some change? Amen. Amen. I only got a dollar. Anyway. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall we be changed. When the perishable puts on, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? O death. This thing that cannot, we cannot run, we cannot outdo, we cannot pay off, we cannot submit to, we cannot give our body to, it's coming after us. But because Jesus must reign, nothing can be greater than him. He must show his power to every enemy that is ever known. And death being the last one must be shown who it is, who it is that's the boss. See, a lot of us here... Whether or not it happens happened to you or whether or not it will happen to you, have faced some sort of death. But I want to tell you, Jesus Christ wants to give us victory. Because he, he must reign. He 
must reign. He must reign over our finances. He must reign over our relationships. He must reign over our families. He must reign over our heartaches. He must reign over every enemy that we face. The problem with us, see, some of us, most of us are miserable because we get disappointed by disappointments. And and this is one of the things I need to tell you. This message is in a series. I'm going to preach the next three weeks on the topic called Up and Adam. Because I think some of us have gotten so defeated that we can't get up and Adam. And I want to show you by the word of God and by the stories in the Bible and Jesus Christ being our sole example that that, that you can get up and add them. Like some of us really are, are, are struggling in life because we expect life to be perfect. And so we get disappointed over disappointments. I'm telling you right now, the best way for you to have a miserable life is to expect perfection. In your life. My God, even Jesus died on Calvary. And what it's telling me is, if Jesus died on Calvary, what am I expected from this life? I think we need to get it clear in our hearts and in our minds that disappointments will happen. Some things will not be what I expected him to be. Some people will not be the kind of love that you want them to be. Some people will not be that kind of benevolent as you want them to be. Some people will turn their back on you when you think they're your true friends. That's just a matter of fact. So you don't have to beat up yourself. You need to learn how to be like Jesus. To, to be on that, 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 that Gethsemane and kneel and say, Father, please let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, let your will be done. God, please don't let it happen. But if you're going to let it happen, God, then let your will be done. Some of us have just got to say, you know what? This is it. This is, this is my lot in life. This is what happened. I, I've met, uh, there's things that I'm going to mess up. There, there are decisions I made. And there are things that are going to be taken out from my life. And, 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 and that's just a part of my life. I mean, listen, you, you, you guys don't know this, but I was swindled about $17,000, my wife and I. But guess how much these, these renovations are? $20,000. God returned our losses and added so much more. Now, I could go and be like, oh, God, oh, I'm so disappointed, God. That's it. Who, what kind of God are you? You're just a mess. Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> but I hung in there. Why? Because three days, three days in the tomb tells me there's a period of time that you're going to feel the pain of your death. There's a period of time where you're going to feel that pain. But this is the key. He must reign. You can't stay down. You can't stay defeated. You can't stay folded hands and wanting to get out of here. You cannot stay down. You need to get up from where you've fallen. Get up and get out of. Get up again. Christ Jesus calls you to reign. In this life, Jesus said, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. If you're a believer today, if you're a believer today, if you're a believer today, you must say, if Christ lives, then I must reign. I must reign. I must reign. Let's all stand. And even death. Even death. Even death will be defeated. I want to pray for you. If you're here for the very first time, thank you so much for coming. We love you. We, uh, we're so glad that you're here. If this is, if we haven't seen you in a long time, we thank you for coming back, seeing our face. Amen. But listen, if you're here, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to give you this invitation. Come on. 
Christ wants to give you the power to overcome. There's no need for you to linger in the tombs anymore. He's risen. He is alive. Hallelujah. We have our prayer leader here. I want to invite you to come. Maybe God wants to talk to you right now. Maybe, maybe there's something inside of you that says, God, I just, I just need to touch you, God. I want to invite you to come down to these, down from these aisles and come here to the altar and let's pray for you. The worship team is going to sing a song. And while we're singing, why don't we just reach our hand to Jesus? Let's just say, God, I want to reign with you. I'm tired of living life defeated, God. I'm tired of living life like the world has caved in, God. I want to stand anew. Because you must reign. You must reign. I'm going to live my life knowing that Jesus Christ reigns in me. Father, thank you for your word that you have placed so wonderfully here. Thank you for keeping it for thousands of years now. Father, we thank you for your presence that we feel in this place. Father, for every soul that is seeking your face. Hallelujah. Touch their heart, God. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Anybody here need prayer? These altars are open. Come on, let's, let's connect to God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you.